Welcome back. The first batch of court documents unsealed in convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein's case include not only the names of some of his associates, but also some really disturbing details about what survivors of his abuse endured. One such, such survivor, rather, is Kiki Doe. She was a 19-year-old model living in New York City, you know, working to make it in the industry, when what seemed like an opportunity at the time was actually recruitment into a sex trafficking ring led by pedophile Epstein. Now, this may be triggering for some, but we want to share this lifetime clip, clip where Kiki relates her experience. He asked me what my name was. He asked me where I was from. I told him I was from Texas, and he was kind of tickled by it, but it seemed like business as usual for him. So he laid face down on the massage table where I very awkwardly began to massage him. I didn't know what I was doing, and I was like, this guy is going to hate this. He asked me to take my clothes off. I was trembling. I was so scared, and I took my clothes off. He began to touch me uh, aggressively. And um, it quickly turned into an assault. I distinctly remember him smiling and enjoying the fact that he was doing this horrible thing to me that obviously terrified me and was violating me. Um, but he was somehow getting off on that. Our next guest is the psychologist who has worked with Kiki Doe, Dr. Janice Stevenson. Thank you so much for your time, for sharing Kiki's story. And what strikes me about Kiki's experience and really so many of the other survivors' story in this case is how other women played a role in helping Epstein uh, and other powerful men assault young girls. I know in Kiki's case, uh, there was a woman who entered the coffee shop who originally you know, recruited her uh, up to even walking into that mansion where a maid had opened the door and Kiki said couldn't even look her in the eye. Um, why and how does that happen? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, it happens because we tend to trust people we tend to believe people until we find out that we can't. And so when we find out that we can't, then by that point we're in trouble. Uh, and that happens a lot for people who are victims of abuse and trauma. So and human trafficking is, trafficking is particularly treacherous hmm. because seduction and enticement are the primary mechanisms for inviting someone into the spider's web. Yeah. I, it, you know, Kiki has said she was unable to function after the assault. Can you help us understand a little bit about the complex trauma that can come from an experience like this at such a young age and let alone any age? Yeah, Kiki in particular had been a, a teenage model and her adolescent years were spent under the influence of caring, genuinely honest adults, including her mother, who was with her all the time. Uh, as she learned to model and travel the world. So she felt safe with people that were new to her. She felt protected and it didn't occur to her that someone would actually harm her or would actually be dangerous to her because everyone that she had encountered had been reasonable, had been decent, had been trustworthy. Um, and the person, the woman who started her conversation with her about this was particularly engaging. She was kind. She was seemingly compassionate and interested in Kiki's struggle as a young model trying to make it into the adult modeling world. Mm. Uh, so she had no reason to not believe her. And she started realizing she was in danger <clears throat> when the maid wouldn't look her in the eye. Mm -hmm. That She said, "That's something's wrong with that. Right. And each step as she went into the house was more treacherous than the step before because she realized that the house was complicated and she couldn't find her way out easily. Yeah, she said she felt trapped. She said she felt she trapped, in trapped there. Yeah, yeah. I Let me ask yeah. you, because when she you talk about... She physically was trapped. In, in that room, and it, it, when you mentioned uh, the woman who, who started speaking with her in the coffee shop, uh, I believe they had gone out to dinner even, and you talk about how charming she was, yeah. and is that love bombing? Is that the appropriate term for what that is when somebody's just so nice to you and everything's positive and what is that well technically it's, mani it's manipulation mm. it's really running a game it's, you, you really are taking advantage of the innocence of someone else and children are particularly vulnerable to that 
and Kiki was in a lot of emotional ways a child. Legally, she was still a child. Mm -hmm. So, and, and children tend to trust adults. So taking advantage of trust is treacherous. Well, there's power dynamics um, at play here, and I would love to talk about that because there's sometimes still a sentiment where people will think, well, why didn't she fight? Why, why didn't she just say no? There were all these red flags. Um, and you're speaking to this in the sense of, you know, we're talking about young adults here, children, teenagers that don't necessarily have um, maybe the tools. But beyond that, I mean, even if you did and you find yourself in that kind of a situation, um, what kind of power dynamic is at play? It's interesting that the word power is one that, that you keep using. With the child, the adolescent has no power. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily view themselves as powerless. So they may think they have a choice in the matter, but by the time the spider's web is spun around them, they don't have a choice anymore. They have either been uh, seduced into believing something that's a distortion and a lie, or they are trapped in a situation that physically, not just emotionally, they can't get out of. Once the maid shut the door behind her, she was stuck in that house. Even, and when they shut the door on the room, she had no more means to negotiate at all. In an interview with Lifetime, Kiki actually went back to the Epstein mansion in New York. Let's watch that moment. And what I continue to live with is, you know, that moment where she shut the door and that feeling of being trapped. And that's how I've continued to live my life in a small, dimly lit room, trying to escape. But I can't. I mean, that is an incredibly powerful statement of what she said. You could see the emotion come right back. My question to you from a psychological standpoint, um, how powerful is it to go back as a survivor? Uh, what did that moment maybe do to her for the sake of her healing? It took two weeks of therapy to be able to get her to be able to go through that. And that was intense therapy to allow her to go through that. Wow. Uh, she's still recovering from it. Um, and she's still stuck in that room in a lot of ways. Kiki has made an enormous amount of progress. We've been working together for a number of years now, and she's made an enormous amount of progress, and she's very aware of that. And she's also aware that the road is still really rough ahead of her mm. because we still have moments when she realizes that she's stuck in the conversation that's in her head about that moment. Uh, what you saw was her both physically walking through being at that house, being at that door, but also psychologically, emotionally, being in that house, hearing that door shut behind her, seeing the face of that maid, uh, and realizing that she had made a big mistake and she had did not know how to get out of it. Hmm. Doctor, so that, she relives that constantly. Yeah, and, and you could see it um, play out. Well, Janice Stevenson, psychologist for the Epstein Abuse Survivor Kiki Doe, thank you so much for your time, for your insight on this. We certainly appreciate it.